Hey guys, it's me, Apurbo, back again with another video. In this video, we're gonna learn how to create a water shader with foam. Pretty interesting stuff's coming up, so let's get right into the video. In my previous video, I showed you how to create a water shader or a realistic water shader. But so many of you requested how to create foams in that water. So we're gonna learn how to create water shader that is a bit more cartoonish or low poly you can say and add foams to that water. You can apply the techniques that are shown here to any water shader or any shader that you like to add foams in your water. So let's start. This video is going to be divided in three parts. The first part is going to be adding the colors and ripples in our water the second part is going to be adding distortion or adding waves in our water and the third part is the best part and the part that you all wanted is how to add foams in your shader so what i have here is a pretty basic unity scene the scene is on the universal render pipeline and what i've done is created a new scene and got everything that comes default with the universal render pipeline into one folder called urp template that's it that's what i have done here so let's start working on our water first of all let's create a plane and let's call it water so let's go to the create menu and from the shader let's go to the universal render pipeline and let's create a lead shader Graph. and let's call it water and to create a material from this shader let's just select the shader and right click and go to create material and let's call it water and let's also apply the material to our plane and i'm also going to show you my urp settings so if i expand the folder and under settings if i go to the universal inner pipeline high quality what i'm going to do is enable the depth texture we are going to need that later in our video when we add forms in our water and also under shadows i'm just going to decrease the cascade count from two that is the default value to one because sometimes it messes with the shader so it's best to use one and that is all the settings that needs to be applied if you don't know what profile you are using the urp render pipelines high quality low quality or mid quality profile the default is high quality but if you want to change that or if you're not sure you can always go to edit and in project settings under graphics you can see the scriptable render pipeline settings is set to universal rp or render pipeline high quality so that's basically how you set up your scene now let's get into the fun stuff that is creating the shader so let's open the shader my previous video this shader will look a lot familiar so under the graph settings what i'm going to do is change the surface type from opaque to transparent because water is transparent so what i'm going to do is right click and select custom mesh and change it to plane so that we can see how our shader is looking so for our water the first thing that we need is a color so let's create a color property called base color and give it a light blue color and let's hook it up to the base color and as you can see we have some color in our water but it looks a bit boring because currently the water doesn't have any ripples if we take a look at a real water the water will have some kind of ripples to create the ripples what i'm going to do is use a very unique kind of noise that is called Voronoid. So I'm just going to hit paste and search for Voronoid. Uh, this is a semi kind of noise it has some very interesting shapes as you can see and for our water this will be perfect but currently this Voronoid is looking a bit boring as our base color because if we take a look at water the ripples in real water will be moving so let's get this Voronoid moving. To move that Voronoid what we are going to do is create a time node and and to control the speed of our ripples let's create a float property called ripple speed and let's multiply the ripple speed with our time node and from that let's take the multiplied value and hook it up to the angle offset channel and as you can see the Voronoid is moving we can also change the cell density in our Voronoid to change how much ripples we want in our water so let's also create a property for that and let's call it ripple density and let's just default it to 4 for now we can 
can always change the values in our inspector because we are creating uh, properties so it really doesn't matter what we choose here so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to highlight the white part of our voronoi that is going to act as our ripples but currently this voronoi is looking a bit thin so let's just make it a little big or let add some contrast to our voronoi so what i'm going to do is take the out channel and hook it up to a power node it literally does what it says it enhances the values in our voronoi so if i change the value from 2 to 8 you can see we have some very interesting voronoi so let's just create a new property called ripple slimness to control the contrast of our ripples and right now i think is the best time to add some colors in our ripple so let's create a new color property called ripple color and under the mode i'm just going to change it to hdr so that i can control the intensity of our ripples and let's give it a light blue color and also give it an intensity of one because why not and let's just multiply this ripple color with our power node and as you can see we have some colors in our ripples right now we are ready to add this ripples in our water so what we're going to do is delete the connection between base color and the master node and let's just add the multiplied value with our base color and as you can see we have some pretty interesting looking ripples in our water if i just hook it up to our base color and save the asset and go back to unity you can see that we have some ripples in our water and it looks cool and it's looking great just a side note here i'm in the play mode right now because i have a very low spec computer that's why when it's not in play mode the shader runs very choppy so just keep in mind that it's not some big difference so we have some ripples in our water but as you can see the ripples are moving kind of uniformly right now the ripples in water doesn't move uniformly so you don't have to do that but i will do that so what i'm going to do is open the shader again and as you can see in our voronoi we have a uv channel so what i'm going to do is create a new node called radial shear and just hook it up to the uv of our voronoi node and as you can see it creates some interesting distortion in our voronoi so you can play with the values and see what you like best these are my settings and if i just save the asset right now as you can see the ripples are moving freely or not so uniformly so that's just something that you can do if you don't like you don't have to do it now we have some ripples in our water but if we take a look at the plane the water is looking kind of boring because this water doesn't have any waves so right now let's add some waves or distortion to our plane so that we can have some waves in our water so let's open the shader graph again what i'm going to do is quickly change the alpha value from 1 to 0.8 or 0.7 maybe because water is transparent for our waves what we are going to need is some kind of noise and the best noise for that is going to be a gradient noise so let's create a gradient noise by hitting space and searching for gradient noise and also this gradient noise is a bit static at the moment so let's keep it moving so let's create a time node also create a float property called wave speed so that we can control the wave speed of our wave and let's just default it to one for now we can always change that in the inspector and let's multiply the wave speed with our time node and let's get this multiplied value hooked up into a tiling and offset node in the offset channel and let's get that offset channel in our uv of our gradient shader and as you can see our gradient noise is moving we can also control how big or how small the waves are going to be by changing the scale of our gradient noise so let's just create a float property called wave scale or wave size and let's just hook that up to our wave scale and i'm going to give it a default value of 5 for now the way we are going to distort our plane or our water is by getting the normal vector of our object or our plane and multiplying that with our gradient noise usually the normal vector of an object is the vector that is pointing up let's get the normal vector and for the space i'm going to set it to object space so it only gets the data from that object now let's multiply this normal vector with our gradient noise as you can see we have some moving normal vector so from that what i'm going to do is add this multiplied value to our position so let's create a add node and also create a position node and also set the space from wall to object so it only affects the object that the shader is applied to let's add 
both of the values and take the added value to our vertex position master node and as you can see in the preview it's going pretty crazy at the moment so let's just save the asset and go back to unity and if i just expand the water shader material i can change the values to my liking as you can see i'm satisfied with how my waves are looking at the moment so let's go to the fun part that is creating foams in our water let's again open our shader so the way we are going to create our foams is by getting the depth from our camera and applying a simple noise to that depth data so for that first of all again we are going to need some kind of noise so let's get gradient noise and let's get this gradient noise moving so what we did with our wave we are going to do the same thing let's create a time node and also create a float property to control our foam speed and let's just default it to 0 0.5 for now let's just multiply our foam speed with the time node and take the multiplied value to our tiling and offset node in the offset channel let's take that value to the ev channel of our gradient noise we can also change our foam size from here by changing the gradient noise so let's also create a float property called foam scale and set it to 30 for now and hook it up to the scale channel of our gradient noise so now let's get the depth data from our camera and fade it away so we have a note for that depth fade as you can see in your depth fade note you have a channel called distance so we're gonna create a float property called foam amount and hook it up to that distance channel a reason we're using the distance channel as our foam amount because if you increase the foam amount it's gonna look a bit weird because it's gonna apply the white color or the foam color to the whole of Object. as you can see here it just doesn't look right so just bear with me here and add foam amount to the distance channel in your depth fade and i'm going to default our foam amount to 0.4 for now and let's also create a float property called foam cutoff so what foam cutoff does is lets you control how much foam you want in your water as you can see here if i decrease or give it a low value the whole water is going to be covered in foam and if you increase that value it's gonna apply the foam only to that object so let's multiply our foam cutoff with our depth fade and take that multiplied value to a step node and get the output of our gradient noise into the step in channel make sure the multiplied value is on the edge and the gradient noise is in the in channel of our step node now let's create a property for our foam color and change the mode to hdr so that we can control the intensity of our foam because why not and let's give our foam sort of white color and change the intensity to one and also make sure you change the alpha value of your foam color to 255 or the full alpha value it defaults to zero and if the value is set to zero it will, the foams are not going to be shown in your shader for other colors that you created you don't have to do that but for for this foam color to apply in your shader you will have to give the alpha value to 255 now let's take the foam color and hook it up to a split node and let's get the alpha channel from our foam color and multiply that with our step node and right now we have a foam shader in our scene but what the last part that we need to do is create a larp node and from that larp node so what we are going to do is delete the base color connection and get the foam color into the B channel of our LARP node and the multiplied value is going to be on the T channel and the added value the base color added value is going to be on the A channel but if we take the output of our LARP node into the base color it's looking a bit weird because I forgot to give our foam cutoff a value so let's go to our foam cutoff and let's give it a value of 1 for now and as you can see on the main preview the water shadow wa works great now let's save the scene and unity let's create a new queue and as you can see the foams are applied correctly but you will have to adjust some settings to work the foam correctly and there you go you have a working water shader that has foams applied to it and it's working on the real time as you can see so you can take this simple shader and add complex things or add more things to it to best fit your game properly you can use this however you like so i will see you in the next video goodbye